Hello, my lovely friends. This is Seven Sense Aptitude Prep. I am your friend Vinod Prabhu, and in this playlist, uh, we are looking at problems on time, speed, and distance. So, this is the fourth video on time, speed, and distance. If you haven't watched uh, our initial videos, I suggest you start watching from video one. In this video, we are going to look at problems on catching and overtaking. So, you have uh, a person who starts early and then or starts ahead and then goes at a certain speed and then the person who starts either later or starts from uh, some kilometers behind him finally catches up with him or overtakes him you have to find either the distance you have to find the time so this is based on those problems okay very very common set of problems in time speed and distance you encounter these problems and some of these problems will will solve using three methods. So I will teach you three methods. Then you choose the method that is very convenient and you can solve all the problems in uh, that method itself. A robber is 10 kilometers in front of the cop. So let us say when we, when it starts, the cop is here, somewhere here, the robber is here. So this distance is 10 kilometers. He starts in front of a cop. When the cops run to catch him, the robber also starts running. So, it's not like uh, they start at different times. The only difference is that robber is 10 kilometers ahead. Robber starts running here at the same time the cop also starts running. The robber's speed is 20 kilometers per hour. And the cop's speed is 25 kilometers per hour. The first thing that you have to remember is the person who is starting behind or the person who is starting after needs to have a greater speed then the person who is starting earlier or the person who is starting ahead, right? If this person, cop, was starting behind and his speed is lower than 20 km per hour, he can't overtake or catch the robber, okay? So, here the speed is greater than 20. So, this speed of the person who is behind or the person who is starting after has to be greater than this speed, okay? So, this speed here should be greater than this speed. Now, the first method. When the robber is caught, let us say the robber is caught somewhere here. Okay, the robber is caught somewhere here. It means he has traveled this distance, the cop has traveled this distance. So he is caught somewhere here. Now, since they are starting at the same time, I can equate the time. The time that the robber has run is equal to the time that the cop has run or the police has run. Okay, cop has run. Now, what is the time that the robber has run? Is this distance, okay, this distance. Let me call it D. So, D divided by speed of the robber. What is the time taken by the cop? Is the distance traveled by the cop? What is the distance traveled by the cop? Is it D? No, the cop is traveling and covering D plus the initial 10 kilometers. So, cop's distance is this, right? We put the second big bracket, this bracket. So, that is D plus 10. D plus 10 by speed of the cop. We don't know D. Speed of the robber we know is 20. Speed of the cop we know as 25. 25D so is equal to 20D plus 200. 5D is 200. D is 40. So, D is 40. Is that the answer? No. They have asked how much time has elapsed when he gets caught. So, D, the robber has run 40 kilometers. Cop, cop's distance is 40 plus 10, right? So, robber has run 40 kilometers. Robber is running at 20 kilometers per hour. So, in one hour, he is doing 20 to cover 40 kilometers. He needs how much time? He needs 2 hours. So, you have the time that has elapsed is 2 hours. The distance from the robber is 40. The distance from the cop is 50. The, see, to cover 50, which is 10 plus 40, the cop takes 2 hours as well because his speed is 25 kilometers per hour. So, this is the first method. You equate the time taken. You can only equate the time taken when both of them start at the same time else you add the extra time if you if it was given that the robber starts 30 minutes ago 
Okay. Then the time of the robber is that distance plus the extra time plus half plus 30 minutes, right? You convert that into hours plus half. So remember that you, you are equating the time. Here, when you equate the time of the robber, it is the distance covered by the robber by speed of the robber, distance covered by the cop, which is distance covered by the robber plus 10. And then you divide by the speed of the cop. Here you got a distance as 40 to cover 40. The robber needs two hours. Let's look at method number two. Method number two is all about relative distance. Relative distance and relative speed. What does this mean? Is the relative distance, is the extra distance uh, between the cop and the robber. So that is the relative distance. What is the extra distance? Let us say they are caught somewhere here. We are not worried about that for now. We are just worried when we talk about relative distance, we are worried about this distance. Okay, relative distance is 10. Relative speed is the difference of the two speeds. Speed of cop and the speed of robber. Is 25, sorry, is, is 25 minus 20. This is equal to 5 kilometers per hour. So what is it asking? How much time is it left, right? So we say if the speed is 5 kilometers per hour, time taken to cover 10 kilometers is 2 hours. How much time is elapsed when he gets caught? 2 hours. Distance covered is the same, right? To robber runs at 20 km per hour, in 2 hours he will run 40 km. Uh, cop runs at 25, in 2 hours he will run 40 km. So this, is 50. so this is about relative speed and relative distance. You only take this distance between the cop and the robber and then you take the relative speed as the difference of the two speeds. This is because both of them are in the same direction. Okay. Now, if same direction, in the same direction, relative speed, so if two persons are running this way, relative speed is the difference. If two are going in opposite direction, relative speed. So, for people who have solved problems on trains, you will get uh, this concept there. This relative speed is addition. Same distance, relative speed is subtraction, opposite distance, opposite distance traveling here, the relative speed is addition. So the first method was about equating the time taken. Second method is about finding the time taken for the relative distance and the relative speed. Same question, let us look at the third method. The third method you can calculate using this formula. D is equal to delta D into a1 by a1 difference a2. So what is d? d is the total distance covered from where? From a1. What do I mean by this? So here we take the cop, here we take the robber. If you want the distance from, let's say robber is a1, cop is a2. If you want the distance from the robber, if you want the distance from the robber, you put it as a1 here. If you want the distance from the cop, instead of a1, you put it as a2. We will calculate it in both the ways and see delta d is this distance, delta d, which is 10. Okay. Now, the, let, let us say we want to cover the distance from the robber. Distance from the robber is delta d, which is 10, into a1 which is the speed of the robber by difference 20 difference 25. Do not write that as minus 5. Difference would mean subtracting the smaller from the bigger value. So distance from the robber is 200 by 5 which is 40 kilometers. If you want to calculate the distance from the cop, we do d cop is delta d into a2 by a1 difference a2. Delta d remains the same, 10. a2 becomes 25. 
A1 difference A2 becomes 5. This becomes 50 kilometers. Remember, this value is the value from uh, is the person, right? A1 is the person from where from whom you need the distance. If you put A1 here, we'll get the distance covered by A1. If you put A2 here, we'll get the distance covered by A2. So you've gotten the distance. Distance covered by the rubber is 40 kilometers. Distance covered by the cup is 50 kilometers. How do you find the time divided by the speed? Two hours. 50 kilometers divided by 25 kilometers per hour. It's two hours. Okay. So three methods. Again, the first method we looked at equating the time. If you want to recap, please go back and see those uh, methods again. First method, we equated the time taken by the robber and the time taken by the cop. So we did the distance covered by the robber and the distance covered by the uh, cop and then divided, it, uh, divided by the respective speeds and then you equated it. In the second method, we looked at the relative distance between the robber and the cop and then divided the, by the relative speed to get the time. In the third, we did delta D into A1 by A1 difference A2, where A1 is the person from whom you need the distance. You put that as the speed. Okay, there. A2, you will get, if you put the speed of uh, the cop A2, you will get the distance from the cop. So, you found three methods to solve problems on catching and overtaking. Let's look at a different problem. A sprinter is 420 minutes behind a jogger. So we have a jogger here. And we have a sprinter here. This distance is 420 meters. The sprinter runs 17 minutes per minute and the jogger runs 30 minutes per meter. When will the sprinter overtake the jogger? Now after one minute, okay, after one minute, jogger has moved by 13. Sprinter has moved by 17. Now, what is the gap between the sprinter and the jogger? Initially, it is 420 meters. Initially, it is 420. Jogger covers 13. Sprinter covers 17. So, what happens to the gap? Does the gap increase, decrease or remain the same? The gap reduces. So, 420 meters. The sprinter has moved ahead by 13. Uh, sorry, the jogger has moved ahead by 13, the sprinter has moved ahead by 17, so the gap reduces by 4. So every minute the gap reduces by 4, in the next minute it reduces by another 4 and so on. And so on. They will all take when this becomes 0. This is after the first minute, that is the distance between them. This is after the second minute. Like that you have to subtract, how many times should you subtract? So that it becomes 0. So how I read that is 420 meters minus 4 into time should be equal to 0. So time, if it is uh, 1 minute, the gap is 420 minus 4, 416. If it is 2 minutes, it is 420 minus 8. So like that you want to make it 0. This makes it 420 by 4 equal to t 105 minutes. In 105 minutes, the sprinter will overtake the jogger. So in 105 minutes, he is overcoming that uh, advantage the jogger had of 420 meters. So he had 420 uh, meters is covered in 105 minutes. Let's look at another, uh, sorry, there was a second method that we had to look at, right? Let's look at a second method as well. Let me make some space. I just delete this. Let's look at the second method. The second method, we can say, let us say the jogger is here when he is overtaken by the sprinter. The jogger and sprinter meet here in this position. Sprinter. Jogger and sprinter meet here. What is the distance covered by the jogger? Is let us say this is D. Hmm? Distance covered is D. So they have, they are starting at the same time because they have not given that one starts earlier than the other. So we take that they are starting at the same time. 
here let us uh, equate the time taken by the jogger and the time taken by the sprinter because uh, they haven't given that one is started earlier than the other or later than the other we equate the time taken by the jogger equal to the time taken by the sprinter time taken by the jogger to cover a distance of d is d by 13 which is the same as the time taken by the sprinter to cover what is the distance covered by the sprinter it is not d we saw it in the previous question it is d plus 420 by 70 if you cross multiply 17 d is 13 d plus 420 into 13 we'll keep it like that for now 4 d is equal to 420 into 13 so here we get d as 4 ones are 4 one not 5 105 into 13 distance that you get where the jogger overtakes the sprinter is d into uh, d is equal to 105 into 30 now that is the distance covered by the jogger what is the the speed of the jogger is speed of the jogger is 13 meters per minute time taken to cover this distance is d by s is equal to 105 into 13 we put that from here divided by 13 because that's the speed time is 105 minutes so even using the second method we get the same value so two methods in the first method you look at per minute what is the uh, you have to make up a gap of 420 so per minute how much is that gap reducing by? and you find the total time taken to make it zero in the second you see that the time taken by the jogger and the sprinter is the same and you do the distance covered by the jogger by the speed of the jogger and distance covered by the sprinter by the speed of the sprinter a car is stolen at 9 am okay this is, let us say the car is stolen from here okay this is where the car gets stolen the thief drives the car at 20 km per hour at 9 am the car gets stolen up chronology samajhe the owner of the car notices the theft at 10 am so he sees that at 10 am so the robber has stolen it and driven so he has gotten an advantage of one hour okay before he was ahead as in, in other questions we saw that someone was ahead and it had to be overtaken here we see that someone is early so in one hour which is the same in one hour the thief is ahead at 10 am where is the thief the thief is not here the thief is ahead by 20 kilometers why is he ahead by 20 kilometers speed is 20 kilometers per hour one hour as fast is 20 kilometers and he is here now the thief is here at 10 am 10 am the owner of the car sees so he is here and he runs after him Hmm? or runs or goes after so the thief is 20 kilometers ahead this person starts at 30 kilometers per hour speed of the car uh, this thief is 20 kilometers per hour how do you find that let us say you want to find by relative time is relative distance by relative speed okay what is the relative distance here? Relative distance is 20. What is the relative speed? Is the difference because in the same direction. So 30 by, I'm sorry, 20 by 10, you get 2 hours. When does he catch the thief? 2 hours. It's not 2 hours from 9. Okay. 2 hours is when the owner of the car starts. It is 2 hours from 10 a.m. It becomes 12 p.m. Okay. 10 a.m. is when the problem actually starts because the owner of the car is behind, the thief is ahead and then he starts going after him to catch. So from that time, it takes 2 hours. So 10 a.m. plus 2 hours becomes 12 p.m. You can uh, even equate the time and do it. If you are equating the time, time taken by the thief, which are the three methods we saw. Time taken by the thief, time taken by the owner. This is equal to distance covered by the thief by speed of the thief which is 20 distance covered by the owner is d plus 20 by speed of the owner which is 30 okay so if you so sorry this is just d so 30 d 
is equal to 20d plus 400 10d is equal to 400 d is equal to 40 kilometers so thief is caught here at a distance of d and d is 40 kilometers per hour 40 kilometers if the thief is driving at 20 kilometers per hour to cover 40 kilometers he needs two hours two hours from here not from here two hours from here so it is 10 plus 2 12 kilometers per hour okay so you looked at uh, problems uh, on um, catching overtaking uh, when someone has started uh, behind when someone has started uh, early and you looked at them traveling in the same direction you looked at the concept of equating time you looked at the concept of um, relative distance by relative speed to look at and then you looked at a formula and the distance is delta d into a1 by a1 difference a2 and d is calculated from a1 if you do d is delta d into a2 divided by a1 difference a2 distance is calculated from a2 you looked at all of these problems you looked at all the four videos time speed and distance most of the problems problem types are covered in these four videos do look at this playlist do look at all the other playlists that we have uploaded we start from the very basic and move on to uh, complicated problems uh, if you like these videos i request you to uh, subscribe to our channel um, click on the bell icon so that you get notified when we upload new videos uh, share it with your friends and show us uh, your appreciation in the comment section uh, if you want to practice more uh, i request you to visit our website svensonstalent.com and look at the resources that we have made available to the students and sign up and use them okay so i thank you once again for joining us uh, in this journey on knowing time speed and distance a little better thank you and practice well see you soon